Thank you for having us. Uh, like Caleb said, my name is Craig. My, my daughter is here on the front row. She's 13. My, my wife and son are back home. We are part of Heart of the City Church in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, uh, which is also kind of like a sister church, uh, Ministers Fellowship International Network. Um, and uh, two years ago, though, I stepped off a of full-time staff at that church. I'm still, like you said, an elder pastor on the preaching team, still on my small group because being in person, flesh and blood with other believers is of the utmost importance. But I, I now run a ministry called Logikos, and I do full-time itinerant preaching and digital missions. Raise your hand if you've ever heard of a digital missionary before. Cool. Well, pleased to meet you. I am a digital missionary. And uh, what does that mean? Well, what is a regular missionary? Somebody that feels the call of God to go to a specific place, maybe geography, to reach a specific people with the message of the gospel. And, uh, you know, in the landscape that we're living in right now, the, the modern town square, you could say, is globally online. Like it or not, about 4 billion people spend four to six hours a day on social media. Now, here's the funny thing is sometimes I think people are like, do you want, you know, are you trying to get people to spend more time on TikTok, Instagram and all that? And, and actually the answer is no. Uh, my kid's not on TikTok. It's a terrible place. But if I know and if, if Christians know that people are going to be there, especially lost people, wherever the there is, there needs to be Christians there preaching the gospel because don't be deceived. Somebody is there influencing our young people unto something. And so I'm not on social media just to take selfies and take pictures of my food. I'm there to preach the gospel. So I posted 888 videos in 2023. We reached 57 million views. And listen to this. We saw over 9,000 people make commitments to Jesus. And we actually keep track of this stuff. 2,600 of those were first-time commitments to Jesus. And so this is where people are, especially Gen Z and Gen Alpha. And so there needs to be some of us there preaching the gospel. And so by God's grace, he's empowered us to be some of the pioneers that are doing that. Um, and I get to be with you in person today. So just to be clear, online social media is never a substitute for local church, but it is a supplement. And we're reaching people with the Bible. So... Um, we're in the middle of this series called God Speaks, and I was talking with Pastor Bob when they, when they invited me to speak at the conference and then, and then stay over and share the weekend, which is such an honor. It's always a privilege to stand in somebody else's pulpit and to speak the word of God. And I know you didn't come here today to hear from me, and even if Bob was here, you didn't come to hear from him. Y'all came here to hear from God. And I came here to speak on behalf of God by his grace, by his spirit. And, and just to be clear, we believe that God is still speaking through this, but God is also still speaking through his spirit who is alive and who hasn't ceased to work, right? We are not cessationists. We don't believe the Holy Spirit just stopped doing things at the end of the New Testament. He is still alive. He is still filling us. He is still speaking. He is still prophesying. He's still healing. He's still delivering. He's still on the move. He is building the, the church. And so... What's beautiful is that sometimes God wants to speak directly to us, and he does, and he can. But sometimes, for whatever reason, by his sovereign will, he likes to use other human beings to get a message to us. Remember Saul on the way to Damascus. He was going to go and actually arrest Christians like you and I uh, because he wasn't a believer at the time. And literally, Jesus showed up to him, knocked him off his high horse, and he says, who are you, Lord? And he says, I'm Jesus, whom you're persecuting. And G literally, Jesus speaks directly to Saul. And then he says, now, go and I'm gonna send a man named Ananias to you and he'll tell you everything that you need to know. And it's so interesting to me, and I don't know if you ever thought about this, that why would Jesus just not tell him everything that he needed to know when he had his undivided attention? And I don't know why, but sometimes God likes to speak directly to us. Usually it's not with Jesus in the flesh, usually it's through his spirit, but he also likes to use men and women to speak to us as well whether it's prophecy, whether it's a sermon, preaching, whatever it is. And so God uses, that's what the church is for. This is why we need one another. This is why the church is not just this building, nor just a two-hour gathering on a Sunday morning. The church 
is people living life together, doing life together, speaking, building each other up, edifying one another. Over 50 times in the New Testament, it says to do something to or for one another. All to say, you're in a good family of faith, and I'm glad that you're here today. Um, so if I could have you uh, just stand to your feet, I'm just going to read one scripture as we jump into the sort of the theme today. I was speaking with, like I was about to tell you, I was speaking with Bob as they invited me, and I said, what are you preaching about? Where, what's going on in the life of your church right now? And he said, well, we're going to be in a series about hearing God, and it's called God Speaks, but I just want to release you to preach about whatever you want. And, you know, but immediately God started speaking to me. No, 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 Craig, you're, you're going to fit right into that series. He was speaking about God still speaking last weekend. I know he's going to, somebody's going to preach about that again next weekend. But I felt immediately the Lord was giving me a word for you guys that sort of through this lens of when God speaks, what do you do with it? And so just as a foundation uh, for today, I want to read this scripture out of Matthew 7. This is Jesus speaking. He says, so then... Anyone who hears, say that word with me, hears. Anyone who hears these words of mine and, say that word with me, obeys them is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. So you notice that there is a difference between hearing and obeying sometimes. This is why the Bible talks about some people have ears, but they do not hear. What is it really saying? It's saying that you, you might be hearing sound waves entering your brain, but you're not, you're not listening. You're not responding, right? Some of you might be thinking about your kids right now that like you tell them something and you know that they're hearing the sounds, but they're not listening to you. And maybe some of you are actually thinking about your husband when he's watching the football game and is like, yeah, honey, what did I say? Uh, I don't know. It's because we heard, but we didn't listen. Jesus is saying, Anyone who hears and obeys is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain poured down and the rivers flooded over and the winds blew hard against that house. Now let me just say this. You know that the rain is gonna fall. The Bible says on the just and the unjust. So, so whether you're a Christian, a non-Christian, whether you follow Jesus with all your heart or you don't, you, you, you embrace him or you reject him, the reality of this life is that no matter who you are, the rain is gonna fall. There's gonna be trials, persecution, struggles right? The rain falls on everybody. The question is, when the rain comes, will you stand? And what's Jesus saying? He's saying that the one who's going to stand, the foundation that's going to hold strong is the one who hears and obeys because the rain's going to come. The rivers flooded over and the winds blew hard against that house, but it did not fall because it was built on a rock. But in contrast, anyone who hears these words of mine and does not obey them he is like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. The rain poured down, the rivers flooded over, the winds blew hard against that house, and it fell. And what a terrible fall it was. I want to preach this message to you today called First Time Right Away. And let's just pray before you're seated. Lord, I thank you for every person in this room, every person that's joining us online. I thank you. It's not a just a coincidence. They didn't just stumble across this feed. I know that you're still reaching people online today. And so I pray that you speak directly to anybody, wherever they're at, in their bedroom, in the car, in a subway, listening and watching and engaging with us, that right there by faith that you would meet with them. And for every person in this room today, I thank you they did not come to hear me speak. We all came to hear you speak. And so Holy Spirit, we don't just invite you into the room. We give you the whole room. We give you the whole of our heart, the whole of our mind. We say whatever you want to say, however you want to say it, speak, Lord, for we are listening. And we declare right now, no spirit, but the Holy Spirit is allowed in this place. May you rule and reign in our hearts, in this church, in our families, in this region. Let your kingdom come and your will be done in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, you can grab a seat. Thank you so much for that. So uh, by a show of hands, raise your hand if you're a parent in here. Cool, about half the room. So, like I said, I'm a I'm I'm a I'm a dad. Um, me and my wife, we got married. We were fairly young. I was 25. She was 23. And like probably many of you, we had these dreams and aspirations. You know, like we'll have kids after five years, and when we you know make some money and travel the world and buy a house and all of these things. And that was the plan. And then we got pregnant with this one right here after three months. And it was kind of like when God hands you a baby, you're like, what do you do with these things? You know, like we're just kids having kids and you don't know what you're doing. 
and you're just trying to figure it out. And so, and then they get a little older and, and you gotta figure out things like discipline and you know, and, and, and then now, he, now here it's, it's like a new age and, and you're not supposed to like spank your kids. And I don't know why it worked for me. Did it work for you? Anybody else, you know, the spoon did you well, you know, mom and dad use a spoon on me. I'm sorry, but it, it's true. And uh, the Bible says spare the rod, spoil the child. So uh, I'm just saying it's in the Bible. But anyway, you know, my mom would spank us. And then at a certain point, age, you get to the point where you kind of like laugh at her, like <laughs> you gotta wait for your father to get home, you know? But like these days, you're not supposed to do that, um, you know? So we like tried other things and uh, you know, you start counting on your kid. Anybody tried the counting thing before? That's a one, that's a two, you know? And um, that doesn't always seem to work. And then I, but early on in, in after we had JC, I got a job at a school and they were teaching this thing called one, two, three magic. And it was kind of like counting, but a little different. There was like this whole philosophy, like, okay, we're gonna use this in the classroom and you don't show emotion. You don't engage with them. Well, why can't I do this? Because I said so. No, 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 none of that. You just say, that's a one. And then you go back to what you're doing. You know, whether it's in the classroom and they're misbehaving or in your house and they, let me have candy before dinner or, you know, the kid's misbehaving in class and then you just look and you say, Landon, that's a two. <laughs> you go back to teaching and, you know, if, if he keeps misbehaving, Landon, I'm so sorry, that's a three. You're gonna need to go to the principal's office. <laughs> but it doesn't always work. <laughs> but we were like doing this. We're like, we're doing one, two, three magic. And then one day we had this couple over for dinner and they had four kids, all under the age of 10. I think it was a span between like about two and nine or so. Uh, three girls and one boy. And after the meal, the adults were hanging out in the living room. The kids were kind of spread out all over the house. And it was the time of the night when it was like time to get going home. And so the dad, he says, hey kids, come into the living room. And I kid you not, like almost immediately, they all came from out of the rooms that they were in and almost stood in like a line in the living room. Yes, dad? And I was like, what was that? <laughs> and he goes, oh, oh, watch this. Hey, kids, line up. Hey, kids, when do we obey? And in unison, from the youngest to the oldest, they said, first time right away. And I was like, where do you buy that? Is that a cream that you can get on Amazon or... I couldn't believe it. Like, they knew to do that. I, I said, what are you guys? He said this. He said, yeah, we don't do the whole counting thing because, well, right now, we believe that God has given us authority to sort of be that, that God figure in their life. Not that we are God, but by God's design as their parents at this age, this formative age of their life, that we sort of stand in the place of God the authority in their life. And what we don't wanna do is train our kids to obey God on the second or third time he asks. And I was like, oh, convicted. <laughs> he goes, we wanna train our kids to obey us the first time right away because that's how we want them to learn to obey God. Because we believe that God still speaks, not just through his word, but God still speaks to us. And when God speaks to us, what do we do when we hear his voice? And so we said, we're doing this thing. They left. Hey, kids, get in here. That's a one. <laughs> now, right? So we get him up in front and, and we're like, okay, kids, from now on, we're not doing one, two, three. We're doing first time right away. So we start, train, we start teaching him this and we're, we're like, we're all in on this thing. So we're, Parker, JC, when do we obey? Okay, now, now you say first time right away. You know, and we're like training him to say this thing. And then, so we were doing this for about two weeks. And then one day I'm like, hey kids, it's time to brush your teeth and get ready for bed. When do we obey? First time right away. Right, this is my daughter. Come here, come here, come here, come here, come here. Come here. This is my daughter, come up here. Real quick, real quick. So I'm like, I'm like, JC, go brush your teeth, get ready for bed. When do we obey? First time right away. Right, so then I go into her room after about five minutes and she's young at this point, she's still younger. And I said, <laughs> instead, <laughs> instead, instead. and then I'm like, JC, you brush your teeth, right? You ready? She goes, no, I didn't brush my teeth. And I was like, well, what do you mean you didn't brush your teeth? I, I didn't brush my teeth. I said, yeah, but I said, when do we obey? And you said, 
first time right away. Right. And then I'm like, but why didn't you brush your teeth? She, and then I start getting angry. And I start, right? And then I start, I, and, and I said this. I said, I said, why didn't you brush your teeth? And she, she goes, Dad, I said the thing. <laughs> I'm like, you said the thing. It's not about you just repeating the thing. It's doing what I said. And I'm getting, and I'm like getting a little mad, maybe not like mad, but like, I'm like, what, what's going on? And immediately I heard the Holy Spirit say, Craig, you do that to me too. You've learned, watch this. You could go sit down now, get down. <laughs> I felt like he was like, you've learned to memorize the Bible verse and quote it, but do you do it? You've learned to show up to church knowing the things to say, how to behave, how to look in front of other people, but do you actually obey me? And so we've been on this journey of like learning what obedience is. And I grew up in the 90s. I'm a millennial where I felt like there was this big pendulum swing from like in the 80s. It almost seemed like, the, like church was so legalistic. And so my generation turned and it's like, it's not about just legalism. It's about genuinely following Jesus. And, but we've kind of some, maybe gone a little too far on the pendulum where it's like, we, we've forgotten that actually obeying what God says is still a good thing. And so I just want to submit to you a thought out of Daniel 3 today. If you have a Bible, you can open or else it'll be on the screen. But this is a story that you may have heard before, but it's this, this idea of we're, we're all hearing voices all the time and there's always an invitation to obey or disobey something, whether it's God or things in this world. And what do we do? And do we, do we obey God the first time right away? And so um, we're going to begin reading in Daniel 3, just to bring you up to speed on what's taking place in the biblical narrative here. This is about 600 years before Jesus showed up. God's people were living in Israel in the land that he gave them, and yet they were really struggling with disobedience and disbelief, not honoring God, just like some of us. And God was speaking to them through prophets and through preachers saying, hey, this is what's gonna happen if you follow God and you, you honor God, you worship God and you obey God, you will be blessed and this is what God's gonna do. And then a prophet's job, especially at the time, was to also warn if you don't listen to God's voice and obey, this is what's gonna happen. Now, God loves us enough that he would prefer to bless us and have our heart and our obedience through his blessing, but he loves us enough to say that if, if we don't, he will also allow us to face face consequences because he wants to wake us up because this life is not about just being blessed it's about walking with him and you can either learn from wisdom or consequences you choose so at this particular moment in time the prophets were saying hey if you don't turn back to God and repent, then you're gonna go into exile. I'm gonna use the Babylonians to take you out. And so what happened in the year 605 BC is that Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and some of the Jews were brought into exile into Babylon. You may have heard about this before. And then around the year 586 BC, all of the rest of Judah, at least most of them, were taken into exile. But it was always for a purpose that God would bring them back to their land and reestablish them. But at this point in time, they had to go through that that uh, consequence. And so Daniel and his crew, they're in Babylon. And in chapter one of the book, uh, we see that they decided we're gonna fast and we're gonna honor God even, we're, even though we're living in a foreign land. And in chapter two of the book, we see Daniel not only interpret a dream, but literally know the dream by God's voice and then bring the interpretation to the king. The king was so surprised, he elevated these guys to positions of leadership in the land. But in chapter three, King Nebuchadnezzar built this massive golden statue because the Bible says that at the time he was the greatest king in all the world. And he wanted everybody to recognize him by bowing down to this golden statue. It was very unique. And so this is what happens. And then the herald proclaimed aloud, you are commanded, O peoples, nations, and languages, everybody that's in Babylon, whoever you are, whatever you believe, whatever your background, when you hear the sound of the horn, the pipe, the lyre, the trigon, the harp, the bagpipe, and every kind of music, you are to fall down and worship the golden image that King Nebuchadnezzar has set up. And whoever does not fall down and worship shall immediately be cast into the burning, fiery furnace. Therefore, as soon as all of the peoples heard the sound of all the instruments and the music, all the peoples, nations, and languages fell down and worshiped the golden image that King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Now this was a moment of challenge for these Jewish boys. 
What were they gonna do? It was very clear that they were no longer living in Judah. They were no longer living within the safety and the confines of, of their church. They were living in a foreign land. It's very clear that there's an authority above them speaking a clear call that they were gonna hear and having an opportunity to respond to. They also were living in a moment in a, in a place where there was peer pressure from all around them. So there's an authority speaking to them from above. There's everybody around is doing the same thing, bowing down to this golden idol. And now here they are thinking, what are we gonna do? Pressure from above, peer pressure from around. Will we bow? Will we obey? Now I know that we don't live in a time where anybody is setting up a golden statue, commanding us to literally get on our knees and bow before a golden statue, but don't be deceived. There are still many, many idols today. There are still many false gods that don't just exist, but they are beckoning to you, calling to you, yelling at you and your kids, inviting you to bow down to them. Will you bow down to the God of self? Will you listen to the voice of pride and be your own king? Will you bow down to the voice of culture right now and everything that society is saying? Will you bow to the voice of culture? Will you bow down to the God of sexual immorality? And will you give in to the temptations and listen to the voice of your flesh? How about this? We live in culture right now where there is such a loud voice from a few people, call it the woke mob, call it cancel culture, call it whatever you want. A society that's saying everybody can believe whatever they want to believe, but not you Christians. You Christians, you're full of hate. You're bigots. Your book condemns. You better shut your mouth. Will you bow down to that voice? Listen, People are doing what the Bible says they would do. They're calling good things evil and evil things good. We follow the God of love. When they say, when they say your God is the God of hate, they're blinded. There are voices that are trying to tell us to be cowards and keep our mouths shut. Will you bow? Will you obey? There is a call that's going out. Listen, we're living in new days, but it's the same old demons. There is a call that's going out to us, telling us to obey, and the question is, will we obey or disobey? So what happened with these guys? Therefore, at the time, certain Chaldeans came forward and maliciously accused the Jews. They declared, o King uh, they declared to King Nebuchadnezzar, O king, live forever. You, O king, have made a decree that every man who hears the sound of the pipe, a horn, pipe, lyre, trigon, harp, bagpipe, and every other kind of music shall fall down and worship the golden image. And whoever does not fall down and worship shall be cast into the burning, fiery furnace. Therefore, there are certain Jews whom you've appointed over the affairs of the province of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These men, O king, they pay no attention to you. They do not serve your gods, nor worship the golden image that you have set up. Let me just tell you, friends, that what you do and what you don't do, what you obey and what you disobey will eventually tell on you. Kind of we live in this time where we think some things are hidden. You know, we can keep some things secret. The Bible says that everything that's in secret will one day come to light. And I know for me, the first 17 years of my life, I called myself a Christian, but what really happened is I showed up to church, put on a mask, because I learned how to go through the motions. I learned how to say the thing. But then I'd leave, and I'd take off the mask and really be who I was. I wasn't leaving, leading a cohesive life. I was claiming the title Christian because I wanted to go somewhere when I died, but I wasn't really following Christ. This life is not about getting some ticket, some fire insurance to go somewhere after this life. It's about following God now. It's about letting a life of obedience overflow from the place of relationship. Because this is what I know about obedience. If all you're trying to do is obey God's statutes, but you don't have relationship with him, that's just empty religion and it will burn you up. And no wonder you're miserable in the faith. 
But when you have a relationship with the living God and you realize that it's a joy and a privilege and a blessing to still hear him speak to you, and you're like, the God of the world still speaks to me? It, it becomes a joy to obey him because you know that God is good and his ways are good for you. Let me just tell you this. Romans chapter one tells us what the wrath of God is now in this covenant. Three times, it says that God handed them over to their ways. The worst wrath that somebody could, to, could endure today in this covenant is that their ears would be deafened to the voice of God. It is a blessing to you that you still feel conviction. A blessing. The worst place to live in this life is to be a lukewarm Christian because you can't fully indulge in all the ways of sin and enjoy it but you know that you're not fully surrendered to God. I'm telling you, this side is never gonna work out or lead to death. But when you go all in for God and you respond to his voice, you respond to conviction and godly sorrow leads you to repentance, that is the place where you will find fulfillment in life. And who you are, who you bow to and who you obey will always tell on you. So these guys got told on. So old King Nebi here, maybe, you know, he's thinking... Now they just didn't hear. Let me give him a chance. Nebuchadnezzar, in a furious rage, commanded that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego be brought. So he brought these men before the king. Nebuchadnezzar answered and said to them, is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you do not serve my gods or worship the golden image that I have set up for you? Look at all the things that I've done for you. Look at what I've provided for you. Are, you. are you really not listening to my voice? Maybe you just didn't hear it correctly. Now I'm gonna give you another shot. I'm gonna give you another chance. When you hear the sound and all the music, hear clearly, you're to fall down and worship the image that I have made, and well and good. But if you do not worship, you shall immediately be cast into the fiery furnace. And who is the God who will deliver you out of my hands? <laughs> what God's gonna save you? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to answer you in this matter. We don't need to say anything to you. If this be so, if you're gonna throw us in a furnace, what we know is that our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning furnace. I love that faith. Our God is able. And I also love this faith. And he will deliver us out of your hand one way or the other, either on this side of eternity or the next. He will he will deliver us, but I love this faith too. But if not, but if not, be it known to you, O king, that we will not serve your gods or worship the golden image that you have set up. No matter the consequence, no matter what happens to us, we will not obey you. Let it be clear. Do you, do you hear what we're saying, Nebi? Are you hearing loud and clear? I want, to, I want to point one last thing out about the, the word in the Hebrew language, which is what the Old Testament is written in, is that the word for to hear or to listen in Hebrew is the word shema. You may have heard that word before, maybe in a different context. In fact, Jewish, Jewish, our Jewish brothers and sisters, they would say this prayer, that it's called the shema, they say it every day. And it comes out of Deuteronomy 6, which also for us Jesus followers is the most important commandment because when they ask Jesus, what's the most important commandment? He quotes Deuteronomy 6, which is what? Hear, O Israel, or listen, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, and with all of your strength. And so the prayer, the Shema prayer, gets its name from the first word in the prayer, which is the word listen or hear. Now, what's really interesting about this word is that in the Hebrew language, there is not a different word for listen and obey. It's the same word. They don't have another word for to obey after you listen. It's the same word. You see, for them, to listen is to obey. And to disobey means you weren't listening. Worship team, you could join me. And, you know, we think about this story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and I think sometimes we think, man, that's such a radical story of, of disobedience. 
you know, these three guys that were given this commandment to bow down to this idol. And, and it was very clear, this, this command from above and this peer pressure from around. And the call was very clear. They were even given, a, even given a second chance. When you hear, you must obey and bow. And we think, man, they disobeyed even unto being thrown into the furnace. And then if you know the rest of the story, you know that they did indeed disobey. They were thrown into the furnace and God was faithful and the fourth was with them and that fourth was Jesus showing up in the fire to save them. And because of their disobedience and because of their boldness and because they were willing to go through the persecution and even give up their life, God showed up, delivered them and that preached to Nebuchadnezzar and it changed the whole land. But I really wanna tell you this, that this is not actually a story of disobedience it's an account of great obedience. Listen, disobedience never stands alone. Disobedience and obedience always go together. Because if you disobey one voice, it's because you're obeying a different voice. The reason why these three said no or disobeyed King Nebuchadnezzar is because they had to obey a higher king. And so when you think about your life, the way that you either obey or disobey God and his, his written commandments or the voice of God in your own heart, you're not just merely disobeying. You're obeying something else. And the Bible tells us this, that if we obey sin, we are slaves to it. Romans tells us that if you obey the voice of sin and the call of sin, the temptation of sin, you're a slave to it. And actually the Bible says that if you're not in Christ, if you're not born again, you are a slave to sin. You can't not sin. And if you're here today and you're not born again and you don't know Christ, I wanna give the opportunity to meet him today. But the Bible says this, that anyone who's in Christ is set free from the bounds of sin and now you can live in righteousness, but you must consider yourself free from sin or dead to sin. There's always competing voices in our life and we're not just gonna obey or not just gonna disobey, we're always gonna do both together. Disobey the world and obey God or obey the world and disobey God. And so I know my time is running short, but what I really felt led to do and, um, is just give you just a short time to, I think sometimes preachers just go so fast that, that we don't have time to just like, just between us and the Holy Spirit, just kind of like chew on what it is that is being said and listen to what it is that maybe the Spirit wants to speak to us directly. And so, of course, man, there might be some people in the room or joining us online today that, you know, if you're really honest, there's some truths in the Word that you know you're not obeying. And sometimes those are things that you're doing that He's clearly commanded you not to do and for others of us, maybe there's clear commands of things that he wants us to do, but you're not doing. And so if the Holy Spirit is revealing anything from the word, of course, I wanna invite you to respond to that. But I also believe, especially in this season and this sermon series about God Speaks, and in this season of your church, how God is expanding you. And I know there's a capital campaign coming up and God wants to do so much more through you in this region and in this, in this generation that, and just in regular life, there, there are things and ways that God speaks to us that extend beyond just what's already written. There's things directly for us, whether through a prophetic word or just the Holy Spirit speaking to you. And it can be so, sometimes as simple as, hey, you got in a fight, you're rude to your wife, and son, I want you to go and be humble and apologize. And, and there's that moment of like, am I gonna obey or disobey? Or maybe you're a young person in your school and now after conference you're jacked up and now God's actually putting feet to your faith and saying, hey, now you're back at school on Monday. I want you to go up to that person sitting all alone at that lunchroom table and I just want you to sit with them, love on them and just maybe tell them that I love them. And now all of a sudden, now all of a sudden there's this opportunity to obey and it's, it's different than when just all your peers were here raising their hands, getting excited about Jesus here in the room. Now it's out there. 
The voice comes though and you have the opportunity to obey or disobey. And so I just wanna give you about 30 seconds of silence to forget about the people next to you and I'm gonna stop talking so you can just listen. I'm just gonna pray for you. And if you would, I just wanna invite you to engage with your faith, your faith and say, Holy Spirit, if you wanna speak anything to me, I'll listen and by your grace, God empower me to obey. I'm, I'm gonna simply pray this and ask, Holy Spirit, would you encourage or convict us on anything you wanna say? And then the last thing is this, I believe that you can make a decision right now in this room and pre-decide how you're gonna behave later when you do hear God speak to you. Maybe he doesn't speak something directly to you now. Like Daniel and his buddies, they didn't wait till they went into the king's court to decide if they were gonna eat the food. They decided before they came in. They said, we're gonna fast. We're not gonna get into the court and see if they have prime rib and then decide if we're gonna fast. They decided before they went in, the decision was predetermined so they knew how they were gonna behave in the moment. And so I just wanna, like, if I could encourage you this, something's gonna happen this week and I believe God is gonna speak to you this week or next week, some way, somehow. Could you decide now that the next time you hear God speak, you will obey first time right away because it's already decided? One sister is in agreement with me, okay. Well, let me just pray. And would you engage with the Holy Spirit for 30 seconds? Lord, I thank you for every person in this room, every person joining online. And we wanna commit this, this short section of time right now to you where I stop talking, where we invite you, Holy Spirit, to speak to each one of us. Is there anything that you wanna convict us of, challenge us about, maybe just encourage us to start walking in? Whatever it is that you wanna say, we know you can speak. And would you speak those things to us now in Jesus' name? every head bowed and every eye still closed can I just see by a show of hands is, is anybody in the room resonating with that you're saying man Holy Spirit's convicted me of something I just want to say a prayer for you would you just raise your hand right where you're at you're saying I'm coming into agreement with what the Holy Spirit's saying sometimes it's just an outward sign of saying God I want you to know I'm hearing you and I'm coming into an agreement with that Lord I thank you for every person that's raising their hand right now whatever it is the business that you're doing in their heart I pray Holy Spirit that you would fill them not only with courage to obey, but actually that you would fill them with a joy and a desire to obey you when they hear your voice. That we would be so struck as a people to say, wow, God would still speak to me. What a blessing it is that I still hear from him and that I get to walk in his ways. Even if it's uncomfortable to me, I know that your ways are good and good for me. And so God, this week and beyond, when we hear your voice, we pray that this word would come back to our heart in the moment and that we would learn by your grace and your courage to obey first time right away. And I just wanna do one more thing before we conclude. If you would stand to your feet right where you're at, I just wanna pray for anybody that maybe doesn't know Jesus. You're not walking in right relationship with him. We're about to end the gathering, but I just don't wanna end without giving an opportunity for this. I'm just gonna say a prayer right now. It's a prayer of faith and confession. It's a prayer of saying, God, I recognize I've been sitting on the throne. Or maybe, man, I've been my own idol. I'm the golden idol that I've been bowing down to, my own pride, my own way. But I'm ready to surrender to you, to listen to your voice and to obey that you're the king of my life. You're the savior of my life. You're the supreme authority in my life. And so I'm just gonna say a prayer right now. I'm gonna ask everybody in the room that's already born again, walking with Jesus, if you would pray this right along with me out loud so people around you don't feel uncomfortable. But if you've never made that commitment, or maybe you know, man, I was once following God, but I'm straight off the path. And I, I know that today, not a preacher, but the Holy Spirit's calling me home. I want you to pray this with me as well. So let's pray together. Jesus, today I recognize that you are Savior and Lord. I confess that I've sinned, but today I repent and I turn back to you. And I invite you, Holy Spirit, to fill my life. Speak to me. Guide me. Whatever you want to say, whenever you want to say it, however you want me to live, I'm all in. In Jesus' name, 
Amen, amen, amen. Come on, let's celebrate and clap our hands for anybody that made that commitment today. We hope that today's message encouraged you. At Life Church, we believe that wherever you are in your relationship with God, there's always a next step to take, and we're here to help you find yours. If you made the decision to follow Jesus today, or you're simply looking to get more involved in this community, we invite you to check out our Next Steps page. You'll find all the information you need by clicking the link in the description below. If this message impacted you in any way, we encourage you to do two things. First, share this video with a friend. It's a wonderful way to share the love of Jesus with someone you care about. Second, we'd love to hear your story. Click the link in the description to share your testimony with us so we can celebrate all God is doing in your life. We're excited to be on this journey of following Jesus with you and hope you have a great week.